Welcome to AuthorTube News, a podcast by two authors looking to stay informed on events which affect their careers and spread the word on upcoming books. I am your co-host, Kara Brown. And Tamara Woods. On episode two, we are going to be talking about diversity, Dream Spinner Press, productivity, and burnout, and some interesting information involving the Audible romance packages. Oh, I actually can't wait to talk about that one because that one's been kind of like a little pet peeve of mine for a hot minute. And with me, I just learned about it a few weeks ago. A friend of mine mentioned it in her um, Instagram stories, and I was like, hey, what's that? (laughs) And she's like, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh. Yeah. I'm dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just just fun little things. But we actually had a talk about this before we started recording about what we were going to talk about first and we decided to knock the the diversity conversation out of the way first cuz it's been a it's been a growing topic here on YouTube here the last few weeks and some of the conversation's good and some of it's not and we talked about it for like what like a couple of hours if we wanted to put a say on it. Yeah, because um Emotions run very high when discussing diversity, and especially when we're discussing it as authors, because authors feel very uncomfortable with people dictating how they should write and what they should write about, which I absolutely understand. But I think that one of the things that all of us should probably learn from the conversation that is happening right now with diversity um, in author to bland, let's have cool heads and if you're ticked off take a minute before you get in front of the camera cool down for a minute and really think about your words because sure you can be angry and you can get those clicks and you can get people to engage with you but is not necessarily in the most positive or in the most constructive way we don't want to be attacking each other you know, we're all in this together. So let's try to learn together. That's my uh, preface before we dive into before it. Before we dive into that, yeah. And then for anybody who's not sure how to have a conversation about it, on my channel, I actually posted a video about how to have a conversation. Uh, Self promo! <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. No, it was very timely. <laughs> Yeah, I I really didn't mean to do it that way, but that's just how it happened. I was like, oh, they think I'm talking about them. Well, you know, I mean, if we put videos out there, put podcasts out there, someone's going to comment. So why not it be us? (laughs) Very true. Uh, Would you like to go ahead and spearhead the rest of this conversation? then? Sure. So when I was thinking about um, diversity in writing and why it's important. I ran across this quote from from Whoopi Goldberg. And when, when I saw this, I related to it so much. So let me read it to you first. Well, when I was nine years old, Star Trek came on. I looked at it and I went screaming through the house, come here. Um, everybody come quick, come quick. There's a black lady on television and she ain't a maid. I knew right then and there I could be anything I wanted to be. And that struck me so much because when I was little, my household, we used to watch Star Trek Enterprise together. <laughs> it was on it was on CBS. We'd sit around the house like I, I don't know why I didn't realize I was a nerd, but we we sat around and we watched Star Trek. And I was so amazed because Whoopi Goldberg was on there and I was like, wow there's there's somebody black in space. Uh, I remember watching that. Actually, ironically, my husband and I were talking about the differences between Next Generation and the newer episodes of the, the thing that will not be named because it's plagiarized off of an indie game. <laughs> um, oh, oh, gets, gets my blood boiling. Oh, my goodness. But anyway, one of the things that, that he and I were talking about is just how much it's the dynamic has changed because in Next Generation, which is what we grew up with, there was a there was just a group of people working together to overcome obstacles in space, right? You know, they were they were going towards that common goal. Where the newer stuff that's coming out, there's so much interpersonal drama about who they are and where they're from and all this other stuff, which from a character driven plot point, that's really interesting. But I think that's kind of going against the original narrative that 
that the that the intention for Star Trek was, which was unifying different people from different places to work together towards a common threat or anything. And it just feels like we've really strayed from that. Anyway, so that's my two cents on that. <laughs> I'm a super nerd, guy, Super nerd. <laughs> And that's absolutely wonderful, and we should take that up during, um, like off air, our, yeah, like yeah. or my one of our write-ins that we happen to have Wednesdays and Thursdays on our YouTube channels, by the way. Oh yeah, um, we do those. <laughs> we do those weekly. So why does quote hit home for me, and why does it matter for someone to feel represented in media? I think that one of the topics that I noticed that came up was. That some people didn't seem to feel that being represented was important. And while I respect that viewpoint, I respectfully disagree. I feel as someone who is an African American, in case you didn't know that, hi, my name is Tamir and I'm Black Sail. Nice um, to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you as well. And I grew up in West Virginia in a, which is, if you're not familiar with my home state, it is very much Caucasian. Uh, so I was like a minority in a minority on a minority, like very, very other. And so I felt othered often. I felt abnormal. And when I would watch television, a lot of times the examples that were happening in like the 80s and even in the 90s of black people in media were people who were drug addicts, people who were in gangs, people who were um, who were very stupid, <laughs> people who made very bad choices and came to bear very bad ends. And seeing Whoopi Goldberg being she was someone who was very important in Star Trek. She was someone who was very looked up to. She was respected. And it showed me that there was a potential for a bright future for someone who looks like me. And there is power in that. There's so much power in that. But, you know, let's do some definitions. I should have started with this, but you know, that's fun. So when I'm talking about, when I'm talking about diversity, I'm using the definition from we need diverse books.org. And as they define it, we recognize all diverse experiences, including, but not limited to LGBTQIA people of color, gender diversity, people with disabilities and ethnic cultural and religious minorities. I, I feel like, and I don't know if you feel like this, Caro, but I feel like when we do discuss diversity, we seem to get stuck on sexual orientation and race. We, yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. Um, and of course, I'm like the white girl in the room right now, so I'm immediately going to have things thrown at me. But this is my observation that I've seen every time that this discussion is brought up. It does uh, center on sexual orientation. It does center on race. Um, and it also centers on who's talking about it. In fact, that third one is the one that I usually see the most because that's the first thing that people will usually go to to discredit the message that's being sent uh, for whatever reason. Now, there's definitely more to that when it comes to diversity. Uh, the two cents that I would throw in actually would be with disabilities. And of course, for those of you who don't know, I used to be a prior education teacher for special education with us, you know, where I've, I focus mostly with individuals who had autism. And... I'll, I will never forget because one of my kiddos went to the library and he got like this fantasy book and he was really into it. And then um, he was the kind of kid that was just like when he had a feeling like he, it would just come out raw and he just started bawling in the middle of my classroom during reading time. And so I went over to go talk to him and in the book that he read there was a kid in there that had a disability and somebody magicked it away better. And that really, really upset him. And it made him feel like he was broken and that there were things that were not right with him. And I was, I was really peeved <laughs> at that book because it, it, it hit a nerve with me too, because people with disabilities aren't broken. They just see things differently. They feel things differently. It's just the, the world works a little different for them, but they're not broken. And I'm going to get off my soapbox now. <laughs> Um, I used to work with people with disabilities in terms of employment and um, habilitation and even in working within their homes and helping them with day-to-day uh, -day care. So, so people can know some of my background as well. 
And I think that that is important to note that when we're, when we as authors, when we start talking about these diverse groups, and if we start talking about groups that we are not a part of, we should take care with what we're putting out there. And I feel like because there is, there's a very vocal group or groups that um, kind of act as watchdogs in terms of books and diversity. And I think that it makes some writers very afraid. And look at, look at your world, right? Look at the world that you inhabit. Even if you are white and everyone around you is white as hell, I am sure that there is someone that you know, or if not yourself, who has some type of mental illness, or they are dealing with some type of physical disability, or they are gay or bi or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There is some sort of diversity that's in your world. So um, one thing as I was doing my research and watching videos and reading posts, um, Megan Tennant from Cloud Kitten Chronicles, she posted a video last year called Why I Don't Write Diverse Books. And of course, the title was a little bit clickbaity. Because, you know, I remember when the video came out, I was doing that kind of, ooh. Yeah, it, I mean, but that, that gets the clicks and that's, you know, we all know the name of the game here. But what she was saying in the video after, you know, you get past the title is that diversity should be natural because it's a part of life. So no, she doesn't write specifically about diversity. It's just what happens in her books because she tries to represent what happens in life. And that is the advice that I would give to authors who are feeling that fear of tackling diverse topics or having a character who is diverse in your work. This, you're just representing life. If you're writing about a diverse group that you don't feel as though you are educated about, or you're feeling a little bit uncomfortable, then it's time to step outside of your shell. You need to start talking to people. You need to reach out, whether it's in IRL or online and start talking to people. Have find people who will be interested in beta reading for you and giving you advice. I don't feel that anyone should be forced to incorporate diversity into their work. I don't think that forcing someone to do that is going to make for good books. And there's there's a lot that goes into that too, because the background that you give somebody actually, I mean, it literally does change their background. I mean, you and I came from different parts of the world. We went through different things. It changed our mentality. It changed our outlook on things. I mean, we still came together and we hang out, we have great conversations, but I'm pretty sure you and I, like, our outlook on thing is, is drastically different. Oh, certainly. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and that's part of the, I guess that's my, not my beef with, with representation and diversity when it's forced like that. It's just, there's so much that goes into it. I think, okay. So my beef, my beef with forced diversity is that sometimes the way that I see it applied outside of a fantasy setting, like if we're talking about like, you know, contemporary fiction right now, is that somebody will just race change a character and not change anything else. And I think that that's a disservice for who they're trying to represent in that case, because obviously a black American doesn't grow up in the same way that a white American or an Asian American or a Hispanic American. So by just saying, oh, well, they're black and then continue on like they're a white character. I, that's my beef. That's where I have a problem with it. Well, that becomes a token. Yeah. And a token character is a character that is just representing this diverse group, whatever that group is. And it's, but it's not somehow informing their life. It's not somehow, it's not making a difference in the world. And let me tell you, being black in the United States informs my life greatly. I am very much aware of how it has changed things for me. My fiance, he's white. And, you know, I know how different my experience and his experiences. 
just, just from the differences in our race. So I think that if, if we're going to uh, tackle this diverse character in writing situation, I think that we need to be conscious of creating characters that are full, that are interesting, that are well-rounded, and that make sense. <laughs> I, I was watching Rowan Ellis, Bad LGBT Representation versus No LGBT Representation. And she was talking about some different examples of how a character can be a poor representation of LGBT. But I think that, I feel like this could be with um, any quote unquote diverse character. So, um, so she talked about inaccuracies in the portrayal or so let's say someone who is trans and misrepresenting what it means to be trans and how that's problematic or having um, tertiary characters who are well-developed, but they're all in the background and none of them actually have a full impact on the plot. And she, so she was discussing whether or not having this kind of bad representation is all bad, which, all right, that sound terrible. But anyway, so th and this video came out, I think in 2016. And she's looking at it in terms of like TV movies. And what she was saying was in order to get to the, the good, well-rounded characters that we're going to have to slug through the bad ones first. And I would say in terms of being authors, being writers, trying to get these stories out, that maybe when you are writing that story, maybe that first, first draft, you're going to write a crappy representation of diversity. Maybe that's going to happen, but you need to have a network that can help you mm -hmm. so that you can be taught how to recognize that, you know what, this probably doesn't make sense for someone who is black and alone walking on a street by themselves in like very rural Alabama. Maybe, <laughs> maybe this wouldn't like be something that would happen or, you know, what have you. It's, I think that it's just about awareness and being willing to be open and also being willing to even fail so that you can get better, which is what we do all the time with drafts. I honestly, sometimes I'm really confused by the diversity conversation. I don't understand why people are so very angrily against it i uh it's, it, that's a really hard one to kind of talk about i mean obviously people want it because i mean there's a there's an identity attached to it and some people want to see themselves in books and some people don't and that's that's a big argument i'm actually hearing it in the comic book side of things because you have people in the comic book industry basically saying it's like hey we want to make characters so that way people can see themselves as these characters and some people are like yeah that's what i want gas yes, queen and they're waving their flags around in the air and then you have another group of people saying like you can't make you can't make a character for everybody because everybody's an individual like you would have to make about as many characters as there are people in the world if that's your argument which kind of like it's it's a really tough it's a really ah this is such a tough conversation to me <laughs> it is but it's necessary because my argument is that don't be afraid of diversity you live in it like it's just it's just here and when we write stories yes we are writing fiction but in some ways it is a representation of life or a life that we can picture we'd like to see or even something that we imagine that could be incredible and outrageous but it has some basis in our reality because we have to write from a place of knowing mm -hmm. So when we're talking about the whole forced diversity in writing thing, I think that forcing diversity definitely breeds resentment in writers. And we can see that through 
<laughs> these diversity videos that have been recently released yeah. on AuthorTube. Yep. And I think that it can create negative and harmful representation because again, people are making these like token characters that don't actually represent whatever column that they're supposed to be in. I, I don't know where to end this. <laughs> well, I'll try. I would actually just like to end it just on the note that people do want diversity and they do want representation. That That is the constant thing that I am seeing. I think they're just wanting it done in a way that is organic and that it does make sense. That's 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 the overall thing that I've at least been hearing for five years. I don't know about you, Tamara. I agree with that. And I think that in terms of us as authors and our job in this, writing diversely should be something that we just think of not as this other or this thing or this this box we have to check off, but as something that just happens organically in our writing. And if you want to step out of your comfort zone and start writing about people that you aren't directly involved with, then research. And I will be including a link to, uh, oh crap, where did it go? And we'll be including a link to the writing with color Tumblr. And that's a decent place to start. But, you know, go out there and write these characters and don't be afraid. And if you don't want to write them, that's your choice. I don't think that anyone should have to write anything that they don't want to. That's not the point of this. In my opinion. I think your opinion is very valid. And speaking of opinions, let's move on to something else. I really am not good at these these transitions. Let's talk about <laughs> Let's just move on. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening to us ramble about that. So anyway, let's talk about Dream Spinner Press. Uh, this is not the first time I've heard about Dream Spinner Press. I heard about them earlier in the year, and this story has exploded. For those of you who don't know, Dream Spinner, ironically, is a publisher who actually publishes LBGTQ and other books, romance books. Um, and they first hit my radar earlier in the year because I caught wind that they weren't paying their authors. So this, yeah. So at first I was like, well, maybe we don't know. Maybe this is a disgruntled author. You know, I, I, I don't have my facts right now. And then I kind of got busy with hectic things that were going on in my life and the story slipped my radar. And then one of you wonderful listeners were kind of like, hey, did you know that this is still happening? We we're like, no, we didn't. Let's look into that. And it's gotten worse. <laughs> um, Yikes. So, yeah. So this... I did some digging because, like I said, they caught my attention before, so I decided to like go in and do the full Caro, you know, investigation. So, according to their website, this this publisher was established in 2016 by Elizabeth North and a group of her friends. However, at the time that I am recording this, there are absolutely no certifications for these individuals to run this publishing house at all. They don't have any English degrees. They don't have any experience in publishing. They don't have anything. They just said that we're here and we're publishing stuff, which for me is a red flag. Um, I would have questions. I'm... They does anyone have like a business nope. degree or nothing? Oh, there's wow. nothing. There's nothing on the website to identify the credentials of this publisher, which makes me very anxious. Um, and for anybody who's listening, it is actually, I'm not going to say it's super easy. You can definitely go through the channels, but it, it's not very hard to establish your own publisher. There's a bunch of how to videos on how to do it. Um, and if you have a very pretty website, people are very easily deceived by pretty graphics. Uh, I am one of those people. <laughs> um, I'm just going to admit Ouch. it. It's true. I am I'm very easily convinced by pretty graphics. Um, now, one of the first blogs that actually started talking about this was one of their authors, and this was back in March 2019. This was actually the blog that I first read, which was by uh, TJ Kuhn, who when they announced that they were departing Dream uh, Spinner because they of the treatment that they were getting and there was a lack of transparency, which on my end means I'm not getting paid and nobody's telling me what's going on. So that, this coming from somebody who is traditionally published. Um, so they announced that they were leaving, they didn't know what was going to happen to their series, and they asked that nobody ask questions. Um, and so sometimes when people say don't ask me questions, there's two reasons for this. When your contract is terminated, there is sometimes a clause where you're not allowed to talk about stuff. So if you guys see something like that in somebody's blog post, just keep in mind that they either A, want to keep the privacy, or B, legally can't talk about it. So. 
Um, and then uh, a little bit later in September, September 7th, they did another blog post where they asked that they still had not been paid. <laughs> It had not been paid. Wow. From March to September. And yeah, still not paid. Um, so now this actually comes down to your contract because if your contract says you only get paid twice a year or once a quarter, you need to know that. And don't be afraid if you do get traditionally published to say, when are you going to pay me? Uh, and then have, have that in writing and give that to your lawyer because if they don't pay you, you, you really can't let that stuff slide because... It just gets downhill from there. Just like this next blog post from Mary Winter in June 11th, who really blew the whistle on the entire situation about not getting paid. Um, they called him out for not being paid. They had a check. They gave, they got a check from Dream Spinner for less than a dollar. Like, Are you kidding me? No, less than a dollar. And, oh, my God. And when they went to talk to them about it, they put out some weird reason about Amazon not, you know, being on time with the distribution of the funds. And as somebody who does have a couple self-published works, that is baloney. That's <laughs> not how any of this works. Nope. Nope. They Amazon is really good about handing out those royalties when they're supposed to because they're just really good about it. It's just not as much as I would like it to be. That's a different problem. Um, and <laughs> And she was able to go and do some investigation and look at her sales rank and her author rank to kind of get a gauge about how much money that she should have been making, which was definitely more than a dollar. Um, and I'm actually going to include that down below. It's a, called a Amazon sale rank calendar, and it's done by the Kindlepreneur. And it's just a guesstimate. It's not accurate. But what it can do is take a look at your numbers and say, you should be making somewhere around this figure, which for her was more than a dollar. <laughs> I'm just going to say that again. Oh, uh, and then... Wow. And then it gets better because on August 2nd, she uh, was talking about, she was talking more in depth about how the sketchy situation involving Amazon not paying was taking up to six months. So again, as somebody on the other end of this, that tells me that somebody took their money and spent it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, so let's move on to the other author. There's four guys. There are three more authors who went through this. There is T, uh, RJ Scott, there is Sean Kennedy, and there is BA Toga. And they all did not get paid. They all blogged about this and they still have not been paid. Have not been paid. Wow. <laughs> with, with claps. Okay. And it's gotten to the point where uh, Romance Writers of America is doing an investigation, okay? When they have to come check you out, you are in deep trouble. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and there's actually more that's coming out since I initially started researching this. There is now, oh, man, there is now a report on Writer Beware about Dream Spinner. And the moment you pop up on Writer Beware, you screwed. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I know for a fact, because I actually, don't ask me why, but I totally talked to a writer beware, and I was kind of like, so if I had to tell you something, what do you need? And they want screenshots, they want facts, they want a whole bunch of stuff. They don't just post stuff up there. They're just kind of like, we have seen the receipts, and this is what we saw. So they're pretty thorough. Wow. Yeah, so. So that's a good resource, by the way. Writer beware? Oh, yeah. Anytime you look somebody up and you find them on writer beware, just be like, hi, have a nice day. Bye. Oh, so let's see. There's a couple of things that I wanted to kind of add on to this, because obviously Kara Spider Senses are saying that Dream Spinner is not going to be in business much longer. I mean, if you're on Writer Beware, you've got your authors blogging about you and you're being investigated by RWA. Whew, you, you are not in for a good time. So I just want to take a moment to get on my soapbox and talk to you guys about due diligence and protecting yourself from people like this, because nothing will upset me more than encountering somebody that takes advantage of other people. No, just sure fire away. You want to piss me off? That's how you do it right there. The first thing that you need to do is take your contract to a lawyer. And if they say they're not going to give you a contract, ask for a contract. Your contract needs to include a couple of things, like when you're supposed to get paid, how you're going to get paid. Are you going to get paid on PayPal? Are they going to send you a check? How are they going to do that? You need to make sure that you have a time when they have to actually send you the transactions for your book, aka how many books that did you sell. Now, with the bigger publishing houses, that's not always going to be possible. They may say, no, Nate may not do that. Big Five may not do that. But you should be able to get something that kind of signifies how you're doing. Um, you also need to have an idea of what marketing efforts that they're going to do. Are they going to do any marketing? Are you doing all the marketing? Exactly how much are they going to invest in this? And the really big thing 
that I would always encourage every contract to have is a termination clause. So if either party violates whatever their responsibilities in the contract is, that termination clause needs to be in there. So that way you can walk with the full rights to your work. So, all right. So the other thing, and then I swear I'm going to off my soapbox, y'all. You guys need to make sure that you do your due diligence. If you do get signed up with a publisher, you need to know what their qualifications are. You need to see how many books that they had. Talk to the other authors in there too, because authors do talk to people about stuff. Uh, do consult a lawyer, um, because at any time that something goes south with your book, you need to go straight to a lawyer. I, full transparency, I had a really bad experience with a publisher earlier this year, and I went straight to a lawyer, and I was like, how do I get out of this? Help me fix it now. And that ended up saving me a lot of trouble. Um, and do research your publisher as well. Again, if they show up on Writer Beware, I would just stop talking to them because, like I said, they they take re they need receipts and all sorts of stuff to post things up on there. They don't just kind of it's not a gossip site if that makes any sense. Yeah, it totally does. Yeah, and then um, it happened actually last week. Somebody posted a video where they were talking about a shady publisher about like the way that they were kind of making them pay for things and then you know doing late prizes I can't remember the name of the video but the reason I'm bringing that up is because you if you know a shady publisher don't be afraid to like mention the shady publisher I mean you have to be careful about like you know ruining a, a business's character because they can legally go after you for that if you do it publicly but you can if you hear your friend say hey I got signed up with this publisher you can be like oh no girlfriend no change your mind on that quick um and then again and if you have a bad experience with the publisher straight to writer beware take your receipts take your experience go talk to them tell them what happened and then again if that's a if the proof is enough for them they will post an article on it so whew. oh god freaking dream spinner <laughs> wow that is a steaming hot pile of no of no <laughs> yes oh okay Whoa. so Okay, so next on this list of things that we're going to talk about is uh, productivity and burnout, which is just the right time of the year for that. Like, aren't you doing a 10K Tuesday next week? Uh, yeah, I do a 10K Tuesday with Sky uh, S.G. Hagas uh, once every two weeks because that's something that she kind of wanted to do, and I said I would do it with her because if you suffer together, you can at least suffer through it. So, you know, writing 10,000 words in one day, and, and Mandy Lynn does that like, on a monthly basis as well. And there's hashtag finish your book fall, which is, was created by uh, Claire Bell Ortega. And she is one of the founders of the hashtag author troopers group. Um, and then there's hashtag 20K in five days, where you're trying to write 20,000 words in five days. And that was created by Tashal Harrison. And of course, there's NaNoWriMo, which is National Novel Writing Month. That's happening next month, where we're going to be trying to write 50,000 words in 30 days. And I'm sure there's plenty of others that I am not familiar with, but these are just a few that I thought of immediately. And th these challenges can be a lot of fun. They can really get you motivated. It's fun to have the camaraderie, the community. It's exciting. But is are they unhealthy? Do they lead to burnout? And I think maybe. So first, again, definition of terms. I'm that kind of nerd. What is burnout? So according to the leadership glossary, of essential terms for the 21st century. Burnout is a state of exhaustion and disinterest in work that persists in the long term. The term was coined from Grand Green's novel, A Burnout Case, about an ar architect who has ceased to enjoy either his work or his life. So burnout is one of those things that can happen in any job sector. But since this is an author podcast and we're all writers here, that's where we're going to come from, right? So when you're doing these challenges, I would suggest before diving in, you should assess yourself. See where you're feeling right now. Are you feeling exhausted all the time? Do you have an inability to concentrate? Are you irritable? Are you having a hard time like 
shaking off colds or your sinus infection has been going on for a long time? Are you having difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep? Have you lost fun in life? Are you feeling hopelessness? All of these could be signs of burnout. And they can also mean that maybe you shouldn't participate in a challenge. Maybe that's just going to exacerbate how you're feeling right now. And I think that it's really important to pay attention to those feelings because as I learned from um, this TEDx video with Dr. Jerry Pulello, we're going to go with that. One of the things that she talked about was that recovery from burnout could take up to two years. It's not just feeling tired one day and then you, you know, have an extra nap and you're fine the next day. It's a long-term ongoing process. She even like likened it to PTSD. So I think that you have to be aware of who, where you are in yourself. But like I said, I don't think that these challenges necessarily will lead to burnout. But how can you protect yourself? How can you keep yourself going? Because I feel like the best way to deal with burnout is just to avoid it totally. <laughs> so if you are thinking about doing one of these challenges, you know, plan for the event. Plan for how you're going to write, how you're going to, how long you're going to do it. Plan for your meals. <laughs> Plan for, you know, doing stuff like drinking water, <laughs> sleeping. Do not sacrifice your sleep in order to do these challenges. You need sleep. It's important. <laughs> I know that we have a work culture that is like, you know, you should always be on that grind and you need to work super hard all the time. No, you need sleep. You need to rest and you need to have realistic expectations and know your limitations. Maybe let's say, for instance, that you're thinking about doing NaNoWriMo and it's that 50,000 words, which is 1,667 words per day. And maybe that's just over your limit. That's fine. Know that. Feel comfortable in that. And just do what you can do. You don't have to put that extra stress or extra pr pressure on yourself. Because self-care is important. And you need to take care of yourself. At the end of the day, you are what is more important than this challenge. The challenge is just there for you to kind of give yourself a boost, push yourself a little bit more. So um, one channel that I really like to watch is um, um, Heart Breathings. Oh, by, I love her. Yeah. yeah Sarah Cannon. Y'all, if you haven't, you should check her out. And I was looking at her website and she was talking about how the different ways that you things that you could do as a writer to avoid burnout. So, and I liked, I liked it. Like the first thing that she talked about was make a list of your stressors. And I kind of do that with my morning pages where I will write before I start my writing for the day. And I'll think about everything that is stressing me out, everything that's in the way for the day. And I try to figure out how I'm going to tackle it. So, Make a list of your stressors. What can you eliminate? How can you manage things? Take those, take your things that you need to do and prioritize your tasks. Because I think that a lot of times we tend to really stress about things, but we don't necessarily think about how we can solve the problem. It's just, and the problem gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it feels like it's insurmountable. Take those problems into smaller tasks, if at all possible. So, you know, look at your list of tasks. And if there's anything that you can delegate to someone else, then do so. Don't be afraid to ask for help. And she also advises to spend time with positive people. And I think that is so important because if everyone is sitting around and very negative, it's like that negativity just breeds more negativity. You have to surround yourself with positive people 
and learn how to unplug because social media is not always your friend. Oh, it is not, no. Like, I love Twitter. You'll find me on Twitter more than anywhere else. But there's definitely times where I'm like, all right, and I'm out. <laughs> because it's just too much, too much. I always appreciate how transparent you are with that, too. Because you're like, I need a moment, y'all, peace. And then you're gone for like a week or two weeks. And then you're like, hey, y'all, I'm back. How's it going? What did I miss? Yeah, because it's important to take time for yourself, which is the next thing on the list. Take time for yourself. And because self-care is important. It's a thing. I know that I talk about it quite often on my channel and in life in general, but it's because I stand by it. You need to take care of yourself. No one else is going to do it for you. And another way that you could do that is to exercise and set work hours. This is something that I've had to work on a lot for myself because as someone who's writing full time, you know, I can do my job at all times of the day and night. And for a long time, that's what I was doing. And I found that I didn't have off time. <laughs> so I was writing as soon as I woke up, if I had a spare moment, and then I was writing before I went to sleep. There was no time when I was like, okay, I'm done for the day. This, this, this is how you breed <laughs> burnout. This is not good. It's not healthy. And focus on how you want to feel rather than what you want to achieve. So all of this should help you to be more of a healthy writer. Speaking of, I wanted to recommend The Healthy Writer by Joanna Penn from thecreativepen.com. Again, another wonderful podcast. She's been doing a hell, hell of a long, lot longer than we have. And she has a lot of great tips and information on her website and on her channel. And this book uh, with the Writer's Workshop, we, I think, was that for camp? I feel like, yes, I think for April, Camp NaNoWriMo, we did a roundtable discussion about this book. And it really helped me to bring into focus how I could better take care of myself as a writer and, you know, just in general. And by taking care of myself more and being more aware of how I'm feeling and what's going on with me, my productivity goes up. That is my little spiel on how to avoid burnout. That's fantastic. I thought I was the psychologist in this relationship, but you nailed it. Ah, oh, thanks, friend. You're welcome. That was that was really good. Um, so that only brings us to the last topic that we have to discuss, which is going to be uh, an, an interesting topic involving Audible's packages. Um, so this has been kind of like a, it's been a weird topic because like, I heard about this because I have friends who are romance authors and they were telling me about how they were removing their books from the romance package. I'm not sure what it's called right now, but um, before it was just called the, the Audible Romance Package. And the way the package worked is that you pay $9 a month and you have unlimited amount of access to whatever romance book. And when it first came out, I was definitely enrolled in that. I was listening to all kinds of books and I was having a good time. Um, but then when one of my friends told me about how it worked, I literally I unenrolled in it same day that they told me about it. and the way that this program works is almost kind of like how kindle unlimited works where where typically you would buy the audio book and the author would get paid and you know you listen to it and all that wonderfulness but the way that it works if it's involved in a package is that the author is on is getting paid a much lower rate um, than it would be if it was purchased so the the figure that I got from the site uh, was that the author fee is actually uh, 0.0009556 for each minute. All right, that's not even a penny. <laughs> it's it's nowhere near a penny. Oh my gosh. Uh, one of the things that my friends who was telling me about this, she said that one of the things that's happening is that there are people who are literally uploading books and putting it on play loop. Because they, it's not like Kindle where you can only flip through it once and get paid. You can listen to that book over and over and over and over again and you get paid for that. So there's there's a couple of people out there that have just got these bots listening to the same book over <laughs> repeatedly. Which I'm probably just telling some scammers how to make money right now. But I'm letting you all know that this is a thing. Also, don't be a scammer. Thank you. Yeah, don't be a scammer. <laughs> 
they gave me one source where they actually gave me the figure, and that was from the digital reader. Now, this the article that I got this from is from 2018. I can't find anybody to give me an accurate figure on it right now. So that, And I know that the package is still available. And the last time I talked to my friend, she said anytime that they try to talk to Audible about it, they basically just kind of give them like an automated response, which I don't. I'm not okay with because you've got a system that's flawed, but at the same time, they're probably not going to actually address it until they're finding themselves at a profit loss and they find, you know, the bots that are doing this. Exactly. Yeah. Because that's how it always happens. Yeah. So it's kind of like when um, people were uploading kind of gibberish books when um, Kindle Unlimited first happened and because they were getting, they were putting up books that had an excessive amount of pages. Some of it wasn't even like actual stories. They were just posting a bunch of crap and then having a flip through, read through and making money from it. Mm -hmm. And it kept happening until it started hitting the Amazon pocket and then they changed things and regulated it. Yeah, so now you can only flip through it once and they have to be a certain length because before people would be like, oh, I can upload uh, a 10-page book and get paid the full amount if one person reads a page. Okay, I'm doing that. And they had to change that too because, yeah. Ugh. <sighs> yeah. Scammers I making know. life difficult for the rest of us. I know, man. Rabble, rabble, rabble. Rabble, 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 rabble. All right. Well, so that brings us kind of to the end of the podcast. And uh, we actually don't have any uh, author shout outs to do that are within the next two weeks. We uh, kind of knocked them out last time. Disappointed. Come on, y'all. We want to we want to share the news. Uh, one thing I will say um, is that since since we kind of start doing this, we have noticed that there are other people who are also doing shout outs. Kudos to you guys. Thank you for supporting your fellow authors. That is really awesome. We're glad that you guys are doing that. Share the love. Share it. Buy my book, please. Love me. <laughs> love me. <laughs> I got to end the podcast on a happy note, y'all. Yeah, was this too serious? I hope not. I don't think but, it was serious, but I know we opened up on a serious topic. Phew. I mean, I mean, I'm only sweating like everywhere now, and also, you know, we got we have our um our sorry outfits our, ready. <laughs> yeah, we have our YouTube sorry outfits ready. Um, but I'm sorry, y'all. I'm not gonna come out here with no makeup and cry. I'm gonna have bright, sparkly eyeshadow, red lipstick, and I'm gonna wear a very cute top. I've got my but hoodie I'll, ready. I will be sad though. The dark, sad. the dark, the dark hoodie. Maybe I'll do it on the kitchen floor like some other people do. Oh, <laughs> we're coming for your brand. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think that brings us to the end. Um, again, feel free to share your guys' thoughts on any of these things that we talked about. We definitely do want to hear what you have to say. Again, this is just two ladies' points of views. There are plenty of other opinions out there. We do want to hear them. If you are curious about any of the articles that we are making reference to, uh, we'll have the links down below. You can check them out yourself, form your own opinions, do extra research if you really want to. Always encourage that. Due diligence is going to save your butt one day. So. And of course, if you want to give us some news ideas, you can hit us up on these Gmail streets at authortubenews at gmail.com. Send us the news, baby. Yeah. And we'll report it. Yeah. Any, anytime you guys find something that you think is something that needs to be shared with everybody else, just send it our way. We'll be more than happy to cover it. So just like the dream spinner thing that I got all riled up about again. Oh, man. Yikes. Okay. That's awful yeah i hope they figure their stuff out anyway Seriously. on that note we hope that you all have a really good day and we will talk to you all in two weeks happy writing y'all bye where's the end button here it is i found it <laughs>